Okay, so I want to tell one story about that time when I was a child. Uh, I can say that is my first memories about what I will tell. Uh, that time in Armenia there was a war in Karabakh and in Armenia there was not uh, electricity. So people get that about one hour per day and you know people for in my opinion people were happy with with any that problems because <coughs> I remember that in that time uh, if one family uh, has one fish or some potatoes or something it was for all of them okay in uh, we we had about five six families our neighbors who was very close to us so every day that time which was about four years every day we eat even everything with them uh, usually in our home and I think problems were very were lot problems that time but interesting is that 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 time people were happy uh, I don't know how to explain that because now when I remember that time uh, there was nothing good to be happy no electricity, no much money, even no bread each family uh, depended to their members if they were three members in family they get one and a half bread per day that's maximum they can't not have more but anyway, that time was happy. Uh, the happiest thing for for the children was that one hour when they get electricity, they could play computer for one hour. And anyway, anyway, they was happy. I was happy. And relationship between people was more and more sweeter and better than now. Now nobody depends to nobody. Everybody has her job and everything and no friendship like that time. I was very impressed with my mother uh, was telling me about the Stalin period that the main part of people were living uh, really like in paradise uh, but paradise like so-called paradise because they didn't know about real situation in the Stalin period that intellectuals were moved to the Siberia and etc. So she said that the main part of people were very happy. Why she started to tell me about it? She was very surprised when after destroying, especially after destroying Soviet Union and in the, during the 80s when they really started uh, to speak about it openly about this period. Um, openly some articles were published. Uh, she said that even they didn't understand and couldn't realize that this monument of Stalin was demolished and the new mother Armenia was on the top of the city in the north part of the city. She said that she, she, she was very surprised and wanted to share with me with your uh, like impressions and memory that how big amount of people were living without really any information about real situation in Soviet time and she said that when the death of Stalin was announced openly by government, even in Armenia. So people were really crying like big tragedy. 
uh, they were losing like real leader, like real father of their own nations. And it was really very strange. And she said that she remembered that she was crying, crying a lot because everybody was even afraid, afraid that the situation could be changed, like Soviet paradise finished. It was really very interesting. But she said how stupid was that how people really could live in reality, never approach to the reality, never deal with reality, like live with this pure propaganda and uh, like pure ideology, but propagandistic ideology. So she was really, she said it's so really strange that the whole Soviet system with all Soviet republics, like huge territories in Russia, many republics were, which were involved in the Soviet Union, could live in this manner, even never realized what situation they had, and even were really crying for their father of Stalin was announced, like his father of all nations within the Soviet system. And she said that for her it was a big tragedy. Uh, and she, they really were very like big tragedy they had at that time and really were crying for, for their real leader. But afterwards she said that even only now I realized what, what happened. Only now when everything was announced and the people started to speak about it openly, about Siberia, Gulag and more Park. Because she said that some intellectuals really suddenly could be disappeared in their positions somewhere in the public spaces. And <coughs> people were speaking that black cars come to one or another buildings and disappear, but they couldn't understand. She said, we were living like in dream. Mm. We couldn't understand what, what, what situation uh, they had at the time, that these special cars come to take people like to KGB, KGB, and uh, like for special conversations, but afterwards they disappeared. So main part of them were all killed or uh, moved to Siberia, these special concentration camps, because they had, they had like the same model of concentration camps in Soviet times in, during the Stalin period. So this second hand memory really very strong. I was very small, like uh, maybe uh, eight, nine years old, she started to tell me about it. It was really very strange uh, to hear this story because she was very impressed and a bit stressed when they realized because in Khrushchev period it was 60s it was 60s after Stalin was Khrushchev like third period like more only they started to, to speak about it about this period and the like local people realized what they had, had in that time because she said that some of her friends even neighbors they had a like very famous scientist like neighbor, he suddenly disappeared because it was the politics of Stalin really to like to to banish the intellectual intellectual part of the inhabitants, uh, intellectual part of the population in the Soviet system. So this is like uh, this second hand memory, which was I was very impressed when my mother started to tell me about. Me <laughs> <laughs> I should tell me I want to talk with Albert Amoya. My God. And uh, I give it a phone and they invite my grandpa to KGB. Uh, and when he went to KGB, he comes and tell me that uh, the woman in KGB, you know KGB is secret, uh, 
open documents. I'm talking about documents, I show them who is, uh, who is called to police and uh, who is the reason oh, is in this city that his father had been in uh, Siberia 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they tell him sorry, my grandfather. And uh, my grandpa told me that uh, my mother, my mother now who who was this man? She she know she doesn't know exactly, but she feel who can could be. And uh, you show uh, find the one photo in the gymnasium. That's his grandfather's old photo. His grandfather, his, his father was a uh, gymnasium, gymnasist. Gymnast. And shows this is a man who called to secret police and told something uh, not good about my father. This is a man who, which uh, my mother told me, and this is true. It's a called KG Berahit that shows this is true. Tātas patmumēs, Gonsā ir ar patas sātāna patmēs. Vēlā, asumā, vīšēdnēra, vočkārnēra hangis čeik. Āravotā tēsmēm, mēnā tēļ pāt sātkāds vočkārīs, mēnā cēs vočkārnēra šāng hālēnēr. Mī hārāts, anangīs. Mī ar asumā papas, asēk mēc, asēk vērts nema dzērā, mahat. Kumat nema gom. Հենց այդ սատան են գալիսա, ասեղը մծնում է դոշը, սատանա են բրնում, արձում ենք իչ զևի է սատանա, ոնցա, պոզեր ունի ասում է, չէ, չէ, նորմալ մարդ էր, նորմալ մեր նման մարդ էր, բայց ոտերը թարս է ինտարանում, Եթ խեղջ սատանային ծարայացրել են, ասել են մի գնա ջուր բեր, ինքը գնում ջուր էր բեր, մի գնա կով կտի, ինքը գնում կով էր կացրելց, ոկ է, մի որ այս սատանը միատ փոքր աղջկա խապումա, հա, ամենակ ուղխավուր է, սատանում � Ας είσαι ο κύριος κύριος Χανζόρ και τα. Λα Χανζόρ και τα. Είσαι ασέγα χανιέλ. Μη μαλάχτη και ασέγα χανιέλ. Μα αυτοί σατανέν αιτανού. Hi, my name is Irene. I'm 33. I'm a mother of twins, a girl and a boy, and they are very different. And now I want to tell you about one case that my girlfriend told me. And she spent her summer holidays traveling throughout Italy. And in a very short time they should see many cities, churches, galleries. And they were running from this city to that and always in the run. And during one of their trips to Vatican, when they went to see, I don't remember what church, it was a place where Raphael worked and created, painted. She was so tired that just she fell asleep in Raphael's room. And uh, now when I remember it, I begin laughing. Just sit. Oshin is this uh, friend of mine who, who has been coming to Armenia forever. And, and this, is, this is around when the Harabakh war and the movement movement and then the war was happening and Oshin used to have a ponytail ah. and which is very unusual for Armenia for a man to have long hair and a ponytail so one day he's sitting around with this uh, all these heads of the Arab military and, and all these guys who are fighting on the front lines and the subject of the homosexuality comes up and of course, it's, 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 it's a no-no around here. Nobody wants to even talk about that. So, 
one of these guys says, uh, well, Oshin, what is your opinion about that? Oshin says, you know, every day when I wake up, I look in the mirror and I ask myself, Oshin, are you or you're not a homosexual? <laughs> and this, of course, completely caught everybody by surprise. Because all of the, there's this man sitting at their table, all these are macho guys who is saying, that he's not sure whether he's a homosexual or not. So every morning he's asking himself whether he's or he's not. So naturally they they were all awestruck. Yes, Որեցյան շատ միակ ազգանում է իմ ազգանում է։ Հարցրեց ասեց դու բորեցան ալիքսանում ինչն ես։ Ասեցի թորմիքն է։ Ասեց դու գիտես որ բորեցան ալիքսանը եղել է իմ ընկերը։ Դա ասեղ էլ ես պետք է իմանալ Եվ շատ հետաքրքիր նոր պատմեց։ Մեր ազգը ապրել է թուրկյայի տարածքում, ալաշկեր կաղակում։ Ուրեմ են պապուկ ես ծարայել է թուրկական բանակում, առաջի ամաշխարային պատերազմի ժամանակ։ Մազարում � Երբ որ արդեն երեկ թուրքերը հրամանը տվել են որպեսի բանակից հայ զինվորներին զինաթապեն և ուղարկեն շինարական աշխատանքների, նոր պարձ էր ինչի համար, հրամանատարը անչումը պապուկին գիշերը իրանք սարիրում � Ալեկսան ճան, դու իմ կյանքը հունական պատերազմի ժամանակ պրգել ես։ Սմա ես հրաման եմ ստացել բոլոր հայերին զինաթապել և ուղարկել շինարական աշխապանքների։ Բայց դա շատ վատ հրաման է։ Ես կիզասում դուրս ագալի, որ մարդկային հատկությունները չեն վերանում, որ շուտ է մարդը լավությունը տեսել, պետք է լավությունով և պատասխանի։ Կիշերով պապիկս այդ մարդը ուետ որինից պատնում է պատնությունը իրահետանքեր � Եապնջիները կծում են ու այդ սարից տես Եապնջիներով իչնում են ներքև, գալիսա իրակ հաղաքը, իրահայք ընտանիքը հավակումա և գալիսա Հարևելյան Հայաստան։ Ասինքն պախնում են և դրանում պրգվում են կոտորվե And the main thing I remember was this um, holy picture on the doors of the house, and the, and the impression it made uh, on me was like it was like a Byzantine icon or something, or like this. And the impression it made me kind of gave me this feeling of. I don't know, some mystical connection with high power and it was like uh, I was receiving it like like a little child and I was just receiving some kind of feelings which I can't describe with words uh, actually and, and the whole thing connected with the uh, picture and then retold uh, several times Mm, was um, well, 
it doesn't seem like this doesn't seem very unreal when I talk about it, but you know, in my memory it was like something, you know, like something mystical, so uh, so it was connected with these strong feelings and uh, and kind of um, got this great influence on my early childhood and until I just realized it was kind of a dream or a lucid dream or something like this. He, he, met it, my, he met my father in Sevan. My mother uh, is a uh, translator from uh, Russian into France. And, and uh, uh, he, he fell in love with my father, uh, with my mother. <laughs> and, but the matter is that uh, uh, before my mother, he had uh, three another women. Well, uh, but they weren't his uh, wife like in law, in a law. They were just like, uh, I'm an artist and you are my friend. And, <laughs> and they had, even they had uh, uh, children. But my mother said, no, I will not come with you to, the, to your uh, studio uh, <laughs> to live with you before until you will not take me to the Zags, huh? Zags is the place when you are making it lonely. And when, so my mother was more younger than he, uh, 17 years was the difference between you, them, and when they went to this place, to Zags, to make it by law, the law, uh, the, the woman which was the head of this uh, office, she said that my mother told me the story that uh, they don't uh, believe that he hadn't uh, any law uh, with him before my mother and they made uh, the big check of his story because his passport was free. But, but, but it's so a time when you were, when you were so when you were reading, you had a stamp on your pass in your passport. So he hadn't these stamps, and after all, my mother uh, was uh, his, uh, my mother was the first and last his uh, wife in a law. So <laughs> and. Uh, after uh, after their wedding, of course, uh, uh, when my uh, brother was born, I had one brother, Arthur, and I had another two brothers, which which were born from another woman, and each of them uh, was born from another woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting story <laughs> because time by time by time they are uh, remembering us and we are calling like ah oh, you know we are his uh, children and we would like to have some pictures or something like this and uh, uh, after uh, after uh, learning our uh, my uh, old brother, huh? Older brother. He, uh, my mother told that he started uh, many travel, uh, started travel, travel on the areas in Armenia and uh, painted, painting to for making for earning money. For example, uh, you uh, how to say bureaucrat peoples. For example, uh, the head of uh, area of uh, some village or some, I don't know, uh, bureaucrat people who were, but he, he was doing it just for money, for uh, making his family. And what's interesting that uh, my mother, uh, uh, when, uh, when she was uh, waiting on, for me, but uh, it was, for example, uh, the time when 
when she could uh, she could uh, how to say able to huh? me and she she already arranged the meeting with doctor and uh, <laughs> to to make a board uh, but uh, my father was very against of it and he, 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 I don't know how he, he learned about this, but he came and uh, cut this receipt and, uh, and uh, didn't allow her to, to make free from me. <laughs> so I can, I can say that I was born, I was born by chance. Ve patmem ha? Yes, but ki patmey patmutun urishi het katarvat. Yev, en inchi masin yev suzmen patmel vora int huzele yev turishi patmutun ne da in sunakan thagan ne gidet kere. Yev vora man especially mi ban he. Vora ma hava katu uneto mi antanik. Uh, Tani kia musina, vers me pacifone arun. Zaina punak nerov, mic um, et shurja pakman tari nere. Yev en pe selinum vor, yev sen spatme vor te fi, yev en pe selinum vor, et pacifone, dar me arit khosak chan tana ten chine pe, et bon, es pacifone, es zaina punak nere, kina tenc antha dramasin khosume asume, bon. Բայց երբ որ սկսում եմ մութ ու ծուր տարիները, այդ պացիվոնը շատ կարևոր դեր է կատարում, իրենց ամբողջ ընտանիքի և շենքի բնակիչների համար, որովհետև էլեկտրոէներգիա չկար, ծուր տեր և հարևաններով հավակվում են մոմի լույսի տակ մարդիկ տանգո են պարում։ Եվ շուրջը ծուրդ էր, եվ մեծ ուժ էր պետք հավատալու և ապրելու համար, եվ այդ երաշտյունը և այդ պացիվոնը իրանց տարին է շարունակ, ոչ մեն իրանց, ալև անրաժեշ չեր, բայց հետո ենց դրասա ժամանակ եպ ինք դարմ ամենա կարևոր է։ Կարևոր ոչ մեն էդ մարդկանց համար, այլ էվ շրջապատի մարդկանց համար։ Ու ես կանը որ ինքս եմ ապրել է դրա միջով անցել եմ Ինչ պտքի պատն եմ, ինչ պատն եմ, որ հետարկի լինի դիկ, բան էր, սենց բանք ասեմ, որ հիսկական ես սեկնդ եմ, բան է հուսի կարա, ալնով մի բարանց տեսկան, ինքը նստակ մի ասին խրոմ մեիք, ու բան արեցինք, ես ասեցի Վանեց կարդի ժամանակ, որ տրեք եկ էլ մնացել, պենք ասեց կոտայքի մարձ ես ինչ գյուղ, ասեց ոս կրենի, մեր ընտանիքին էլ էլ էլ, այսնք պապուս ընտանիքին էլ են տեղ են տեղավոր ծրել, լավ ասնեմ հետո ինչ եք Ասմ ինչ պիտի անում, գնացել են Մոսուլ է գրուրբեկյանին ավթահանքերում աշխատելու։ Ասմ են իպատ մեր գնացել է Մոսուլ գրուրբեկյանին բաներում, ավթահանքերում աշխատելու։ Հետո ասմ ինչ է, ասմ կսաներկություն, Շատ հետարքիր բաներ էր բատում ստայլնի ժամանակ, ստայլն է արձան են պատմում, բացում ու իրենց գադրլու գյուղում, մի հատ գիշկիր վերակերնամ ասմա շատ սնորական են, որ ստայլնը ձարկը չի պարզում մեզնիս բան չի ուզում։ 
շատ հետարքիր է, որնակ ասինք իմ ամը շատ զարմաննալ է, որ առաջյան դաշտում նմնական ու բանբակ են մշակեր է։ Եվ բաներին, դպրոցականները տանում են բանբակ հավակելու, ուրեմ ենք � Դա էլ տես շատ տարորինակ տպավորություններ, հետո պապես դեղ, պապես մասին տեղ տես այդ կարել է ասել հիշողություններ, ինք հասացող էր ու ասենք այդ սասուսի տավիտը անգիր գիտեր, կամ ոնց որիք տերասում դավթի խետյատ Ողխուշ չէ մտավ, բու բան մելի կողանջայնեն է ազգագրագետ իմա եկելա, պետքի ինտերվել է վերսնի։ Ապսել ասում ես անաստված աթեսնի, բան ոնց են ասում ինտերվել չեմ տա, կամ չեմ պատում է իլի։ Ու չգիտեն ոգձան Ուրեն ուբան նոր պապս արդեն մորացա, որ կոմունիսների հետախոսում թկսեց են, բան տավտի հեղեկյատը պատմել երկել են, ու տես շան է դարգիր էլ, երսում յոթի էլ երկեն ողխոր չմտնելու համար իրան վերսեցին տարան, տարան նստսեցին տեղասեց Նիսկ է դաշտը կա ասմեն ռաշոյի տապում սա։ Դաշտը շատ հետ արդիր է տենց։ Մեզ ունի մեզ, ունի իր կույրերին և համարում ենք նրան երջանիկ, նա ամուսնացել է երկու անգամ, առաջին ամուսնություն այդքան էր հաջող Նա չեր կարողան չեր ու ծանկանում շարունակել իր կյանքը, սարկայն տատիկս և պապիկս որոշեց բուժվում էին այդ ընթացքում, ջերմուկում, որի գլխավոր բժիշքներ արդյոն Մարքարյանը, իշնորհիվ այդ բուժման չկա չարիկ առածբարիկ, Սկզբում մի հարկ է ամեն ինչ այդքան էլ հարկ չեր և նրանք չեին ծանկանում, այսինքն արջոմը ծանկանում էր վլորատատին տատիկիս կույրը ոչ, և այնպես տացվեց, որ ամեն ինչ հարդվեց և տատիկիս շնորհիվ, ամեն ինչ իդյալական եղավ, նաև նրանք կազմեցին իրենց ընտանիքը ունեցան երեխաներ, այժմ նրանք ունեն չորս երեխա և ապրում են երջանիք, ծավոգ չկա արդեն արդյոն Մարկարյանը մահացել է հիվանդությունից, շատ շնորակալ եմ ձեզ այս ամենից, այս նկարի պատմությունը, եթե դուք չլինեք, ես չէի գտնի եմ կյանքի եկրորդ կեսին։ Ուրեմ են ես մի կարջ պատմություն կպատմեմ, որը ինձ պատմելը իմ պրովեսրը։ մասնագետներ պիլիսոպականդի հետ կապած ու մի հետպիսի մասնագետ դա եղել Սովետական միությունում, որի լսողությունը շատ վատ է եղել, շատ վատ լսողությունը ունեցը։ Եվ մի շատ կարևոր սեմինարի հետ կապված արտասամանից պ Եվ այդ սեմինարը սկսպում է, հավակվել են Սովիտական միության ոլոր պիլիսոպանները, մի որոշ ժամանակ երևի մի երկու ժամ լսելուց հետո, այդ թանկարժեք ապարատը, որ հատուկ 
բերել էին արտասամանից իրա համար, այս մարդը հանում է ականջից, կծում է գետնին կոտրում է, եվ ասմա ես չեմ ուզում վրսել, այլ է վրսել։ This is my mom in Beirut, Lebanon. She tells this story over and over again because I was not there when the Civil War started. Up. And we had a country house that was in the Arab region. You know, there were not a lot of Armenians where our country house was. And they stayed for as long as they could. They were the only Armenian family. So the Arabs, the neighbors, Christian, were trying to pressure them out of it. And they would get, at different times, fighters with machine guns would come and knock on the door and just hassle them, ask for money, ask for food, ask to use, because it was three floors. And they said, you don't need three floors. You don't have renters anymore. Your kids are not here. Give us the other floors. And my mom says one day, she was all alone in the house. And she was chopping tabbouleh. She was chopping parsley for tabbouleh. Uh -huh. And they started knocking on the door. And she just knew that they were just coming to hassle again. And I have, like, the way she tells the story, I have the image in my head that just knowing my mom, I cherish it. She's got the apron and she's got the big knife with parsley on the knife. And she comes out, opens the door, and says, What do you want? You know, in Arabic, of course. And they go, we need to speak to you about what the soldiers need in town. And she goes, shame on you. Shame on you. You bother somebody like your mother. I am trying to be tabule here. <laughs> would, you, would you want your mother to be bothered? <laughs> and they literally, for the first time, retreat. <laughs> And there's not even, my father's not there, usually there's people who are, you know, because we would, we, they wouldn't leave her alone in the house because of the situation. So, I, that story stays in my mind because it represents my mom's strength and what she had gone through. Yeah. And she definitely scared them off with the knife with the parsley on it. <laughs> Papikas pat numai horoset mi-a simt, dar anțialum e herostatius de arcicar, că eu vom, oș mai ce gîteri în cele herostatius e herostatius în nor va jarcai în hamvel, dar a cine herostatius e mai tânăr e că eu vom, e că eu ați nere și ați zarmat să ați înt, este nelof de herostatius e în ce, că ați înt, eu mi-am că s-a mai zarmat alier, văt, pies, hîșum am temat de că în ce ți-ai zarmat numai pe se. Kitucian zargas man hamar, but him I saw me say yes that chems gum waki ishum me tansala tem artik aman mi zargasum ish pesa in kalum yef shat zar matsat ana kun kalze but but I saw I saw chika horitz meke vor karwana ish me an havana kan yere buiti an havana kan bandi mena naman zevo in kali naman trama bandi sam botenat ish in chika tarvez. Hello, my name is Haigui. I'm 33 years old. I want to tell you a story about my sister. Uh, she has a very bad um, character, uh, not uh, holy, I mean, but uh, she's always in a hurry, but she's always late in everywhere. <laughs> uh, even once she was late during her wedding party. Yes. And she told me that she was in, uh, make, she was making her hair to be done, and she was late. Uh, when she came uh, to the yard, she noticed that uh, the parents and relatives of fiance were dancing, as you know, uh, outside. <laughs> and she came out of a taxi with uh, wearing jeans and boots. Uh, but with the veil, with the veil, and everybody was so surprised. Uh, so she was very shamed that period. Uh, she was crying all day long. But now, when she's talking about it, mm, yes. 
մորակույրս պատերազմի տարիներին երիտասար տախչիք էր, որ աշխատում էր գորդարանում։ Որերից մի որ առողջության պատճառով աշխատանքի չի գնում գորդարան, որտեղ արտադերվում էր զինամթերք, բացակայում է, որ վավերջ գարիս են ստուգման, վախից երկու ընկերույի մտնում են պահարյանին մեջ և թակնվում, ստուգողները բնականաբար իրենց չեն գտնում, բայց իրենց գնալուց հետո երկու աղջկամոց կսվում է հիստերիկ ծիծախ, բավական են երկարատև, որը հետո վերարտարդադվուր Also, I want to tell you about fish that was basic food for us that time for all of the Armenians. Uh, there is one fish called Sig. Usually it's uh, live in Seven, Seven Lake. That time uh, fish Sig, potatoes, was our basic food. So, people eating that maybe every day. Fish, potato, potato, fish, <laughs> and that's it. Uh, but anyway, yes, and, and that time was in winters, that four or three winters was very, very cold. Maybe the coldest winters in Armenia from 91 to 93, for, bef till 95. Uh, I don't remember 91 and 92, but I can remember after 93rd. And till now I didn't see winter like that. The snow was very much, uh, about one meter snow. and very cold, minus about more than minus 20 degrees by Celsius. Uh, but what I want to tell you, with this everything, again I'm saying that people were happy. All that families I told you already about uh, came to our home every day with their children and cooking something, sitting, uh, maybe, maybe at 6 o'clock and till 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. They just uh, eating, uh, somebody playing piano, somebody guitar and people singing and that was really very happy. All that children are like brothers and sisters, and till now, uh, when they are already about 24, 23 years old, but it is family. Uh, we are, we all are close till now. Uh, no, so much, but uh, in that in time, that time, but again, uh, we never can can forget that, that times, because it was really very hard for our, our parents. Uh, I can imagine now, at that time I did not understand that. But for me, uh, sweet in this memory is that I remember that every people was happy. With all these problems they are happy. And I'm very glad that in Armenia now uh, there is no problems like that. I wish people will be happy always and always go to, how to say it, always go to, always go straight. And Nobody bad happens with Armenians and with all the people in the world.